It's midnight in Manhattan, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings from the ass of the hotel room in the heart of New York City. On his recent visit to the United States, Emperor Haile Selassie of Ethiopia made an eloquent plea for peace. And that is why we are proud that our company is the largest producer in the United States of magnesium, aluminum, and stool. On a famous husband and wife morning show, which had several breakfast foods as sponsors, the following was heard. What did you have for breakfast, son? Well, what did you have for breakfast, son? Sonny, what did you have for breakfast? Ouch, Daddy, you hurt my arm. And Mrs. Manning's are the finest pork and beans you ever ate. So when you order pork and beans, be sure Mrs. Manning is on the can. Hogan steps up to the tee. There's a rather strong crosswind blowing from the left. He addresses the ball, and well, that tee shot was beautiful. It carried about, I should say, about 130 miles from the green. On an audience participation program, the master of ceremonies asked a veteran sea captain who was on this day celebrating his birthday how it felt to be 90 years old. Top side him all right, but below the water line, I ain't worth a damn. Well, sports fans, this has been a Saturday of upsets on the gridiron. Harvard has been bowled over by a Barton Army team. Isn't it true that you have been named one of the ten best-breasted women in Canada? Poor timing and improper pauses can be the source of many a headache for announcers as evidenced by this improper change of pace. And the United Nations will adjourn until next week. And now here's a local news item. A lot of villagers were very startled today when a pack of dogs broke loose from a dog cat crazily through the fields of a well-known tobacco plantation. Friends, does your cigarette taste different lately? A CBS performer, while doing a program on etiquette, instructed her audience as to the proper way to set a table. And according to proper etiquette, you should set the table in this manner. Taste the forks and spoons on the table. The, uh, forks and spoons. Of course you know I mean the forks and spoons. At Triborough Furniture Store, you'll find floor coverings, lamps, and an occasional piece for any room in the house. On a program on which Art Linkletter was MC, a little girl was asked what her mother had told her not to say on the radio that day. My mother told me not to announce on the radio that she was pregnant. To remember tomorrow morning, why not try Philip's Dental Magnesia? You'll find that it makes an excellent mouse wash. On an Arkansas station, a selection of hillbilly records were apparently mixed up with a shipment of classical records with the following result. Now here's an interesting looking record. Uh, it's got a classical label, uh, sung by a trio, John, Charles, and Thomas. The next portion of our program is brought to you by Claire's Millinery. Remember, ladies, Claire's Millinery will flatten your head without flattering your pocketbooks. <laughs> now our next contestant, is this is Florence Kinsey from from Providence, Rhode Island. Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Kinsey, are you any relation to the Dr. Kinsey? Uh, not that I know of. Well, have you read the Kinsey Report? No, I'm waiting for them to make it into a movie. The confusion of Pearl Harbor was responsible for this West Coast announcer's choice of words. Everybody today would like to take a crap at the jack. On a musical question and answer form, Sigmund Spaeth, the noted tune detective, had musical questions asked of him from music students who were in the audience. Uh, Mr. Spaeth, uh, why is it I'm always enthusiastic about the musicals, uh, Johann Strauss, and I always sleep when I eat it? Well, Mr. Spaeth, you know, well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new Miss America today, a lovely Georgia Peach. I, I mean, Peach. Now, Sally, you've won $32. Are you ready now? Here we go for the $64 question. The $64 question has been the trademark of Take It or Leave It, one of broadcasting's most popular quiz shows. The sailor was asked to name a noisy food like celery. Let's listen to his classic answer. Um, uh, beans.
Here's a news item about a prize dog. Let's listen to this newscaster's personal comment at the conclusion of the story. And now, finally, in the news, a story that came in over our wires a little while ago. That prize-winning dog of Madison Square Garden was crated and shipped from New York City to Boston the other day. It seemed that the valued dog got his tail caught in the crate. The tail apparently was removed, and the irate owner sued for $10,000 in damages. That's a lot of money for a piece of tail. Let's tune in on this disc jockey, who was sponsored by a new housing development. At the Quaker housing development, we have just one house left. Now, you better hurry, because we're pretty sure this one won't last long. And now for our record. It's just an old shanty in old shanty town. Thank you. Thank you very much for being such a wonderful contestant. And now, our sponsor wants you to have this carton of cigarettes for your consumption. On a test flight of one of our new B-36s, Testicle Sergeant Fetters of Sweetbread, Sweetwater, Texas, bailed out. Let's turn our dial to one of the airwaves' favorite soap operas. I've worked hard enough in my life, You know, now I think I'm going to retire and give my wife a business. Now names in the news. Lovely Rita Hayworth is resting comfortably in Nevada at a nude ranch. On Queen for a Day... An eight-year-old boy wanted to win a brand new suit. When asked why, this is what the youngster had to say. I want to wear it tomorrow when my mommy and daddy get married. And remember, friends, when you're in Bowman's department store, take the elephant to the third floor for the best values in coots and soats. Uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> this incident occurred on the College of Musical Knowledge widely heard musical and audience participation program. The master of ceremonies was surprised that a lady contestant, young in appearance, had nine children. He asked what her husband did. Oh, my husband operates automatic screwing machines. And so we conclude volume two in this series of classic radio and television boners. Additional albums will be released soon. So until we meet then, this is your reporter again leaving you with the words of Alexander Pope, who said, to err is human, to forgive, divine. Any reproduction of this recording in any form is strictly prohibited. <laughs>